Let me just ask you quickly, have members of Brigade uh, 2506 been involved in drug trafficking? Yes, sir. Uh, you know that personally? Yes, I do, sir. Um, are you aware of whether or not narcotics proceeds at some time may or may not have supported Contra efforts? Yes, sir. Narcotics proceeds were used to shore up the uh, Contra effort. Okay. Did you personally play a role in some of the transfer of that money? Yes, I did. Okay. And are you familiar with the name of a company called Frigerificos de Punteranes? Yes, sir, I am. What is that company? Well, it's a shrimp uh, processing warehouse, but uh, more importantly, it was um, one of the fronts that we used. Did you set it up? What role did you play in it? I was a key person in setting up uh, the interlocking chain of companies around Frigorifico de Punta Arena. And are you familiar with a company called Ocean Hunter? Yes, sir. What was Ocean Hunter? Ocean Hunter was the uh, agent, an agent for Frigoríficos. It uh, was supposed to uh, import shrimp into the U.S. Was that part of the interlocking network that you talked about? Yes, sir. Did you launder money? I have laundered money for that network, yes, sir. And did some of that laundered, uh, were payments or arrangements made by which the Contras could receive money through Frigoríficos? Yes, sir. You arranged that? I, through my intermediaries, uh, okay. made it possible. All right. And uh, did that particular company receive $250,000 in humanitarian assistance funds from the State Department? Yes, sir, it did. Okay. Was any of the money traceable? to drugs or to drug-related transactions? The money that we, uh, you're talking about the money that we provided? That's right. No, sir. And why was that? Because we're experts at what we do. You did it according to your best interests? I the did cartels? It, the cartel, and I, and I think I added a, um, a measure of responsibility to the way it was handled. Now, when you suggest was there a recklessness about the way they did it? Well, I think that if you, if you just check the record, uh, General Noriega was unable to uh, solidify his power base in 1983. Uh, I, since I handled the dollars that were so important, I always made sure that he was just powerful enough to serve us but never let him get powerful enough to control us. Now, you uh, believe that your arrest in 1983 came about as the result of a betrayal. Is that accurate? I believe General Noriega very adroitly used the American uh, uh, law enforcement agencies to uh, surgically extract me from the operation while leaving the operation intact for him and his cronies to uh, continue working with them. And this was part of your official records which law enforcement authorities seized. Yes, Is that sir. accurate? Yes, it is, sir. And this document which was seized, which you recognize, was placed into evidence by the federal government in the trial against you for which you're now serving time. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Now, I direct your attention to the top notation on the headings of this document. What is the first heading in that top column? The first heading is the uh, abbreviation for Miami. Miami. And the numbers and figures that are listed underneath it reflect what? They reflect uh, monies that I took out of, uh, search, out of the uh, consolidating process for my personal use. The next heading says what? The next heading says uh, CIA. Now what does that CIA refer to? It refers to a uh, one shipment of money I received in the Was month. the CIA the CIA we know? Is that yes. the Central Intelligence Agency? Yes, sir. Uh, what, uh, what 
What does your accounting show with respect to the CIA? It shows that I received a shipment of uh, three million in change uh, sometime in the middle of the month from it, them. Do you know what that was for? Well, it, it, I always got instructions with it, and uh, I, I carried out the instructions. But that did reflect a distribution of funds by you with respect to CIA. Is that yes, accurate? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. This will be made part of the record uh, as uh, exhibit number 14. 14. Thank you. Also, uh, yeah. I might remark this was government exhibit number 12 in your criminal trial put into evidence by the federal prosecutor. Yeah, uh, we were surprised when they put that in. Were you ever asked about that? No, sir. Were you ever asked what the notation CIA meant? No. Nobody has ever asked you? No, sir. We tried to uh, have this document uh, not put into evidence, and uh, the government was adamant about putting it in, so they put it in. There is not a Central or South American country that the cartel cannot influence economically and politically. And un until you realize that, you cannot deal with the... Uh, Was there a relationship you became aware of between the Colombian drug cartel or drug traffickers and the Mexican? Well, the Mexicans get their, a lot of their product cocaine from the cartel. They uh, also have a, uh, an asset, which is a 2,000 mile border with the United States, which they sell access to that, uh, to that access. So the Mexicans and the Colombians uh, are a natural, and, and they worked. That's why it's an essential part of the drug route to the United States, is obviously the, sure. the border. When we were talking about the cartel and the intelligence information that they received from General Noriega, you said that in 1982 that the Med Medellin uh, cartel uh, knew all of the agents. Now, are those all of the agents in Colombia or was it in Panama? And you used the word toyed with them. Could you? Well, yeah, some kind of, an, you know, what do you mean okay, by that? Okay, I was spe uh, specifically talking about the agents in Medellin. Hmm? Uh, what they did was... Uh, I mean, there were the, some agents who attempted to in infiltrate the yeah, organization? They were, uh, you know, attaches at the embassy and all these people that were uh, obviously uh, some, with some sort of drug interdiction effort that were supposedly uh, working secretly. Were they, were they working in Panama and in Colombia? Uh, I don't really know their, their personal uh, schedules, but um, what the cartel did was uh, they, uh, in 1982, might have been 82 or, yeah, they invented, they uh, had some invitations printed uh, that appeared to come out of a government agency of a Colombian government agency for a Christmas party at the uh, Intercontinental Hotel. These uh, invitations were sent to all of these agents I'm talking about. And uh, most of them showed up to the party and uh, once they were there, they were notified that they were there at the uh, invitation of the cartel. That's what you mean by saying toy. They, they, they really, had, they knew them all. Yeah, and, and they were a bit arrogant in the way they, um, they handled it. I know that the cartel knows who's who and could uh, do horrible things if they wanted to. I think that uh, they have uh, learned uh, how to use violence uh, uh, graphically in, in the most opportune moment. I think the, the assassination of the uh, uh, Colombian uh, Attorney General uh, a week or so ago uh, 
is very uh, indicative that they know how to use terror now. Sure. You know. So they're not going to kill an agent. They won't kill people at random. They'll make statements with their violence. But I'd like you just to describe for me with a little more particularity the New York banking process. How that, <clears throat> uh, you know, who would you meet with in the bank, for instance? Can you? Okay. Every uh, bank that I dealt with uh, has a representative. Was that, I mean, everybody who has a portfolio has well, a representative. Yeah, so that's no, nothing unusual about that, is there? Except that uh, our representatives aren't found on the uh, uh, listing in the uh, bank directory. Uh, so you had a special we have linkage? A, we have a special man to deal uh, first, I had a special man to deal with. How would you business. contact him? Do you have a name that somebody uh, you could telephone? I contacted their Panamanian branch. I would say, look, I'm gonna, I gotta be in New York on such a date. I got uh, this CD and and this loan and this and that I want to discuss, and uh, I'll be there at nine o'clock. And, I, I and would be, where would you walk into the bank or somewhere else? Uh, they would have the. Uh, a limousine meet me and bring me in. Limousine meet you at the airport? Yes, sir. And bring you in? Yes, sir. And uh, would any representative meet you at the airport? Uh, I would normally have somebody waiting for me when I got there and I would be a escorted. Your person? Uh, no, their person. It was their And they would escort you to the bank? They would escort me in and I would uh, take care of business. Did you know who you were looking for when you first arrived at the bank? Well, after a while, I, I knew the fellows uh, that were in charge of it. You know, I, Do you know them by name to this day? Uh, no, sir. Uh, you and, don't? Uh, no, because that's, uh, there was a, a very real reason why uh, we, we went through this uh, type of charade. Uh, we were breaking laws in a very uh, big manner, and you always have to have plausible deniability. Uh, and uh, the New York banks are no fools. You know, so everyone... Well, that may be questionable. Well, <laughs> I found them to be... Uh, they engaged in the business and they undertook it and some banks have already paid fines, I think grossly insufficient. Well, they paid yeah, fines for laundering, but correct? That, but that gives you a tremendous uh, insight into how sophisticated they are. I'm doing 43 jail, years in jail. They pay fines when they get caught. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. You know, so uh, I guess I'm not as smart as they are. But there was incredible resistance uh, to legislation which would hold them accountable up until this time. They, they could operate with impunity because uh, I guess uh, they would get a, a slap on the wrist and a fine of $10,000 per transaction. I said, I said, uh, which so even if they were caught, it was basically What you're suggesting is going to uh, affect their bottom line terribly. We've seen uh, significant corroboration of a number of different things in these last days. The witnesses uh, have uh, certainly detailed General Noriega's involvement with the Colombian cartel to smuggle narcotics, to launder money, provide them protection. Uh, some have even testified to his involvement uh, in murder. Uh, Noriega's uh, sale of weapons to the Salvadoran rebels has been confirmed by at least three witnesses. His relationship with U.S. officials uh, has been confirmed. Uh, his connections between drug traffickers uh, and the connections between drug traffickers, incidentally, and uh, contra supply efforts of one kind or another, whether private or otherwise, have been mentioned in the instance of Gonzalez, in the instance of Mike Palmer, uh, mentioned by Mr. Rodriguez, by Mr. Rich, by Mr. Blandone, and Mr. Carlton. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, narcotics diverted to ranches and airstrips all across uh, various parts of Central America, and we have learned uh, of connections uh, to Cuba, of connections to M19. We have learned, obviously, of an enormous network of narcotics trafficking that has come to threaten U.S. foreign policy interests and that has come to threaten uh, institutions of this country itself. I appreciate the insight that you've given us and the fact that uh, you have been willing to cooperate. I just want to give you one chance before we walk out of here. Is there any
piece of testimony as you've thought about it? Is there anything here? Because you're serving a long sentence now, but I assure you, if you, you know, lie to this committee, it'll be longer, and I think you understand that. Yes, sir. And you said that to me this morning before you even came out here, that you understood that. Yes, is, is everything you've told us today the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. Uh, the consistency of what we've heard is extraordinary from person after person who has declared against their own interest at great risk uh, personally to their lives, at risk of further prosecution, at risk of uh, uh, us discovering through other sources documentation that somehow they didn't tell the truth and therefore serve even longer in prison. And I think when you measure all those things against what's been said, there's reason to find enormous credibility in it.